Okay, this talk is about obesity theories, why people get fat and gain weight. First one is taste addiction. We all know processed food and junk food can taste really good. The companies have billions of dollars. They do research, research on it, how to add just the right amount of salt and sugar and fat and MSG to get that optimal taste. They have people come in like as a research panel and they all try all the different variations of it until they figure out what's most addictive. Um, they want you addicted to it so you buy more food. Okay, next is caloric density, and this just means that high caloric density foods, again, lots of sweets and simple sugars and oils, um, they are more likely to make you fat. You can put you know, over 5,000, 10,000 calories of high caloric density food in your stomach versus you can't put that many calories of fruits, vegetables, and starches in your stomach. You know, and Chef AJ, Dr. McDougall, Dr. L Doug Lyle, and others, they've talked about this extensively. Uh, so if you wanna be skinny, eat the whole food plant-based diet, you know, okay? People who eat that way, the low-fat plant-based diet, almost all of them are skinny. All right, what about estrogenics? Estrogenics are chemicals, both the ones produced by your body, those are called endogenous, and the ones that we get from chemicals outside of us, exogenous, and they're obesogens. They tell the brain, you know, look, you're pregnant and you gotta save weight for the baby. Our ancestors worried about starvation, so saving weight, in encouraging weight gain to have more energy available for the baby is an effective estrogen. So Anthony Jay writes about that in his book, Estrogen Generation. It's a good book. Philip Darby's got a good book on that. There's a lot of good stuff on estrogen chemistry. Okay, uh, MSG is thought to potentially be toxic to the hypothalamus and potentially affect appetite. Dr. Russell Blaylock writes about that in his book on excitotoxins. By the way, I don't recommend the way he over exaggeration his recommendations of supplements but he is a neurosurgeon his father died of parkinson's and he spent a long time studying that and he knows a lot about that particular subject okay uh yamashima is why i'm giving this talk because he's done new research on the hypothalamus arcuate nucleus hunger center and it's quite interesting okay dr uh, Tetsumori Yamashima, he's a Japanese neuroscientist, did fascinating research on hydroxynanol, a lipid peroxidation product found commonly in omega-6 cooking oils. And it's been shown in studies on mice and on monkeys that these hydroxynanol products um, appear to be causing brain damage in both the memory center, the hippocampus, and in the hypothalamus, the hunger center location, especially the arcuate nucleus. Um, here, so here we go, hippocampus, CA1 sector, hypothalamus, arcuate nucleus. Uh, with da brain damage after exposure to H&E in Dr. Yamashima's research and in the research of other workers in that field. Um, and that's why this is so fascinating. A person who's on a routine daily basis eating these omega-6 cooking oils, in Dr. Yamashima's opinion, it appears that they're probably progressively losing some neurons in their hypothalamus arcuate nucleus. So over time, they're gonna be less likely to be able to regulate their hunger. And I've seen tons of people, they're fat 20 or more years and they never lose the weight. And what Dr. Yamashima is saying is he thinks that they're gonna be progressively less able the more time goes by, the more decades go by. And there might occasionally be some exceptions to it, sure. People are a little bit uh, variable in their genetics, but most of them, no. Uh, so the more chronically fat they are, the less likely they're will ever be able to regulate their hunger and maintain their body weight. So here's Yamashima's paper. Very interesting stuff. Vegetable oil derived hydroxynanol causes diverse cell death, possibly leading to Alzheimer's and related lifestyle diseases from the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease and Parkinsonism. This Yamashima, he figured out why so many people were becoming demented in Japan, you know, more so than previous rates because they're eating more and more of these cooking oils. Okay, I'm gonna show some pictures now that might be a little bit interesting. Uh, just real fast. Some of this you've already seen. All hydroxynanol inhibits ATP synthase from other lectures, part of electron uh, transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria. And one more thing that you've already seen, just in case for the newbies who haven't seen it, HSP is heat shock protein. It's a, a protein inside of brain neurons that transports proteins for recycling to the lysosome. And when hydroxynanol binds to HSP, it will cause act activation or causes attraction of the calpane protease to cut the HSP in half so it no longer functions as a chaperone of proteins or it sort of protects the membranes, lipids in uh, lysosomes and they'll get 
breakage apart of the lysosome, and the lysosome's digestive enzymes will auto-digest the neuron and kill it, so that's not good. All right, so now there's, here's, that's an old picture. Now i got a new picture for you. Here's a new fascinating picture of these are brain cells in the hypothalamus, which is really the center of the brain. The hypothalamus is the crossroads of the brain that takes input from the limbic system, sort of the emotion centers, um, and the mammal part of the brain, if you will. You think of the brain as three parts. The bottom part is the lizard brain, if you will, the reptile brain, like your brain stem. On top of that's the limbic system, the mammal brain, and on top of that is your cerebral cortex, the so-called human primate brain. Anyways, these brain cells are being destroyed. Here they're all dissolved. Here's a normal neuron with a dense, obvious uh, nucleus, for example, and here's uh, dead neurons that are just auto-digesting themselves and dissolving. So when they lose those neurons from the hypothalamus, hunger center, arcuate nucleus, they're less able to ever control their appetites. Okay, one more, and this is it. So now here is the hippocampal neurons showing how these are in the memory center of the brain. You need these to remember anything. Here's a normal-looking neuron with a really easy-to-visualize nucleus and uh, cytoplasm around it, well-delineated well margins, and here it is being auto-digested, dead neurons. Not good. So my advice, no cooking oils, not one drop. And uh, that's it.